Okay, it looks like it's... I think it's... Okay, it actually is getting my voice now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I am still alive. I'm so sorry, everyone. That was crazy. Oh my gosh. Uh. A kitty just snuck out of her. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll be right back. on now. Uh, I'm not going to start the stream over. I'm just going to, uh, just, okay, yeah, just start, start things from the top. Again, it is 509, so we're not, we're not too behind. All right, um, anyway, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the stream. This is Gnarly T, or Kevin Bryant. Of Magic and Mirrors, and um, I just want to show you uh, some of the new things that we are putting in the next uh, alpha release, which is 0.1.2, and that is um, a lot of fixes and also a lot of new things, and um, and a lot of kind of addressing general feedback from uh, the users. So thank you. All right, uh, so. Let's get started. Uh, the first thing I want to go over are the two new endurance maps. Uh, I believe we showed uh, these maps in the last stream, but I'm going to show them again. Um, which is Cloaked Patron and Pale Nova. Is the music still too loud? Okay, I'll turn it down. All right. Okay, I turned down the music. Um, anyway, I'm loading up a uh, cloaked patron. And I, don't know, I think this is the first time it's loading on Michelle's machine in a while, so. Is the music still too loud, Michelle? Oh yeah, there is a 30 second delay.
Um, actually, while while this is loading, I'm gonna take the time to um, I guess kind of show some things off from the community, um, including uh fan art, screenshots, just things like that. Um, just kind of show off you guys stuff, and we d we definitely like seeing these things, so we're gonna show them off. Uh, the first one is. Here's a fan art by uh, HNDSM on our Discord group. Um, did a really cool, uh, looks like a Photoshop line work um, of Nilo. And I love seeing things like this. This is really like, uh, he even posted, a, or he or she even posted like the sketch of uh, like just the, the pencil lines before going over it in um, like digital brushes and stuff. And um, it looks really neat. I, I definitely um, means a lot to me that like we put a lot of detail in these assets and um, kind of seeing like uh, someone who has kind of appreciation for that and actually takes the time to kind of you know uh, recreate uh, recreate the things and just kind of you know really really observe it. So it you know so thank you. I mean I know I did that when I was younger too and you know or like Master Chief and Halo and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff um, and just really you know uh, really it was you know taking the time to observe like little little details and things like that and um, and just the overall design so um, I just think that's that's really cool to see that happen to one of our own creations so um, anyway that is freaking awesome so thank you keep up the amazing fan art uh, so the next thing I want to show is uh, some some screenshots from the uh, users. It's all fantastic screenshots, by the way. Um, I mean, just kind of like awesome shots like this that you know, um, like we we could have made this like our own promotional shots or whatever, but these these were taken by. Uh, the community and they actually do a really good job at making some really nice really sweet you know showing off you know the characters and the vistas and all that stuff you know so um, yeah these are great thank you again keep keep posting awesome screenshots keep making amazing artwork all right so uh, this is still loading Um, does anyone here have any questions? Um, all right. And that's what I thought it's going to do a shader compile. Um, so it's going to look all weird and stuff before, but it'll be, oh, thank you. I don't know. I mean, I know like, I know, of course it's kind of a silly thing now, but I know like seeing people like on, um, was it, uh, like GameSpot talking about, you know, the whole like bull shot debate or whatever of like. And it's like, you know, sometimes it, you can make a game look bad by taking a bad screenshot or whatever, you know. But, like, people who actually, you know, understand at least s some some rules of, like, photography and stuff like that. And know, knows how to make, you know, a, a good, you know, eye-catching, you know, a shot or whatever. I think that's also kind of important. Because it, it is also very easy to make bad-looking screenshots. Um, but... Anyway, still loading. It's all crazy looking. <laughs> Four hundred and twelve shaders left to compile. Yeah, these uh, this content hasn't been loaded on Michelle's machine in a while. Uh, she's been mostly uh, doing um, asset creation, 
uh, if you follow her uh, her Twitch channel, Deadly Frog. Um, that's where um, that's you'll kind of see what she's been doing lately. She's been working on a character. Um, you can turn the HUD opacity to zero in the settings menu, um, but there's not really a faster way to switch off the HUD. Um, but yeah. Almost done. 182 shaders left. I don't know if turning it on real time will help. We'll see. All right. All right, it is uh, almost done. There it is, it's done. So uh, this is cloaked patron. This is uh, this level is based on the uh, the moon level, moon of concealment, where Jamar's uh, out to avenge his brother by hunting down the Night Scythe Hive. Um, so uh, just like all the other uh, campaign missions, it's got like the exact same backdrop and vista, or the other endurance levels got the same backdrop as uh, the other ones. Um, so anyway, um, but but unlike the campaign mission, it is it is a completely different layout. You know, the actual playable area. Um, so. I will answer questions in a bit, Michelle. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so sorry, I just I lost my train of thought. Um, okay, so basically, uh, just like just like all the other endurance maps, it has you know a bunch of different uh, pathways and it has you know uh, various territories and all that stuff. Um, where you basically move around the map and really the territories are, are kind of there to really change the layout of um, of the um, combat scenarios uh, for example like this area is a little bit more like a typical arena just a few platforms and stuff like that um, and there's like areas that have like kind of more lo lava pits and whatnot um, though this is like one of the first maps where we're actually using the uh, the night scythe stocks as uh, like playable geometry uh, where we still have kind of some that are just you know more visual dressing uh, but like we actually have some of these surfaces as bridges and um, things like that um, and this is also an um, one of the uh, there's actually like one of, one of the few environments in endurance and in campaign that's completely organic. So, um, and one of the um, one of the challenges we wanted to add to the level design is have you know rough rocky surfaces. Um, uh, so these are like these rough surfaces you cannot wall run. However, uh, a surface like this you absolutely can. Uh, so kind of think of um, these areas as uh, like like platforms on walls. So um, they're just something you can kind of jump up to and see either if you want to get from here to here or just jump straight to here. Uh, you know, there's you got you got a plenty of flexibility to uh, do whatever you want when it comes to uh, moving around. Uh, but as far as the different play spaces, we try to have like some places a little bit more open, like this area and this area right here. Um, and then uh, areas that are much more tighter, uh, like this right here, uh, that really uh, requires the player to use more uh, vertical movement and um, more like air-based attacks and whatnot. Um, 
whereas in the more open areas are, are fantastic places to do the, the top-down twin-stick shooting. Um, so, um, again, some other layouts. This is also one of the, uh, besides uh, some of the Plimdivon base levels where you have the metallic ramps, this is uh, one of the few organic levels that make use of uh, ramps or sl uh, sloping um, and uh, sloping pieces of geometry to get you to, you know, uh, different elevations. Um, but yeah, uh, Michelle and I, when we set dress these, it's the same process. We use uh, sub-levels and um, we just kind of uh, assign ourselves uh, rooms and we just kind of work simultaneously to dress these levels uh, to get them look, looking nice and whatnot. Um, so that's uh, cloaked patron. Um, also the uh, also the music. It's um, using the music from the moon of concealment level. So like kind of not only uh, the visual, or not only the visuals is based on the campaign mission, but also it's using the soundtrack uh, from that mission as well. Um, so anyway. Uh, Okay. Well, uh, I would be happy to answer that, but I w I'd rather show you than tell you, so. Um, anyway. So the next level is Pale Nova. That's okay, it's just the ambient music. Alright, uh, I can answer the, um, the first question about inspiration from Platinum Games. Absolutely. We are absolutely inspired by Platinum Games, uh, we're inspired by the 3D Ninja Gaiden games, and we're also inspired by um, the Devil May Cry games. Um, as far as like the character action elements, uh, as far as the shmup elements, we are inspired by Geometry Wars, or Geometry Wars, Waves, and uh, Ikaruga. Um, but I Ikaruga is more of a scholar-based uh, shmup. But as far as like the the aesthetics, um, and all right. Alright, so we're, uh, I guess we're building shaders. Looks like most of these shaders are built, but it's going to eat up s CPU juice, so I can't really do anything until it's done. You know what? I actually have a better idea. We'll have to close that down though. Um, I'm just going to launch a build.
All right, so this is a uh, Pale Nova, which is uh. Um, so Pale Nova is based on the White Blazar, which is the uh, mission um, where Jamar is basically trying to protect his uh, his ship from the uh, as he's trying to you know flee flee Solace and stuff like that. Um, oh, uh, are you talking about the soundtrack? Um, Let's see, was it ba Ballard Wing? Um, as far as the soundtrack, uh, Kevin Greenlee, our composer, he's he's the one going to be responsible about the uh, the release of um, the soundtrack. Uh, that's all up to him, and he wants to release it when the game is completely done, because uh, there's still there's still more tracks that need to be made. Um, however, you can go on his SoundCloud and listen to um, the current soundtrack right now. Um, alright, yeah, this, this, this is really delayed, uh, anyway, uh, back to the topic of Pale Nova, this map is, um, it is based on the White Blazer, however, uh, we don't want it to be the exact same ship as the White Blazer, so it has been, uh, modified, so it's got in the engineering area, which most of the uh, combat's going to be taking place in, um, has more uh, structures, has more catwalks, has, you know, more pipes, walls, things like that. Um, things that, that help make the play space. Um, and. Yeah, it's it's uh it's a lot more tight than uh consolation. And so while most of the territories will be in this area, the engineering deck, uh you can also go towards um this area towards the front. Uh this room right here is also a territory where you have this kind of uh you know, a winding uh hallway that just kinda goes in a big circle, but it also has uh two two levels, which is this lower level and uh, the upper catwalk level. Um, again, that, that uh, try to space between, um, or at least you know, kind of have a, a good mix between you know tight, tall spaces and then uh, wide, flat spaces. And then in, and then there's uh, layouts that are kind of a little both. Uh, so like here's the very corner, where in the white blazer this was this would be an elevator that take you up to the the B and A decks uh, closer toward to where the bridge is. Uh, that's all closed off. Obviously, there's a big giant catwalk in the way. So now this is a big uh, player area. Um, you can kind of go in this little pit down here and start shmupping away, or you can, you know, climb out and uh, do do kind of more aerial combat up here or up here. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of things can happen. So. And then the last part I want to show you is this elevator. So there's two more territory spots, which this elevator, which is constantly moving, will take you up to the, uh, there's the upper, uh, the upper D, yeah, the upper D deck, which is where, um, in the White Blazer mission, that's where you go to man the, the hyper cannon. Um, so uh, it's much more um, much more tight. It's got kind of more of a, a warehouse feel now because we threw more boxes in here and uh, you know some power loaders and whatnot. Um, awesome. Hey. Um, but yeah, uh, and destroy these two if you want. Um, yeah, again, much, much tighter areas, a lot of, a lot of boxes, <laughs> um, 
and then but if you uh if you go down just one level uh there's this level which there'll be another territory right here um it's actually at the very end uh right here a little bit more open but not not that much more open and a little bit more of a, a varied layout than um the deck above it so Anyway, uh, for the most part, that's uh, Pale Nova. Um, all right, so um, so here's the next thing. What's up? Uh, I I wanted, cause the thing is that the official answer to that question is actually one of the things that I wanted to show today. Um. Anyway, so so the next thing I want to show you guys is um, we've added. This has been a very very popular request and. I really wanted this to happen too is to have a training mode much like the Kickstarter demo um, but the Kickstarter demo training mode was like put together in a week and a half not even um, because like a lot of people just kind of you know we just kind of threw people into the fire and you know with no no understanding of any of the mechanics and stuff like that and we thought we could like incorporate you know kind of some some type of a tutorial in um, the actual campaign however it's still a lot to take in uh, so uh, we added this training mode and the way this training mode is just kind of um, it's just kind of really you select whatever you want it has these little videos um, kind of sh showing the move or showing kind of the mechanic and it, and it uh, has a description and just kind of talks about I don't know why these are not updating Oh, I know why. Uh, I'll have to fix that bug in a bit. Um, but anyway, uh, basically, you'll have the uh, the name of the ability that you selected, and you have a description. Um, and so, for example, even as something as look uh, walking and looking around, you select it, and um, it'll have like a, a narrator. Uh, Talk, describing the mechanic with subtitles and then it'll also show the tooltip showing you know what buttons you need to press or you know uh, to perform like a certain move so here's just the most like 101 video games 101 <laughs> moving and looking around so um, you know players to move forward and then they also have to look to be able to turn the corner and we have like these little uh, gates that you get to so and something learning as simple as crouch and stuff like that um, and let me show you kind of more like like the like wall run for example so it shows the uh, wall run again it's like these very like controlled environments uh, where you can just kind of uh, practice and um, just kind of get a feel for uh, a certain ability um, and what's also really cool is whenever um, so like whenever you fail you can it'll start you back at the beginning but if you ever want to leave um, so if you ever want to leave you can just hit the start button it'll take you back to this menu so um, so go back to air dash. And so yeah, it's it's got all of these uh different, you know, things that can really, you know, and tries to explain uh 
certain concepts in, in a little bit more detail, such as the technique meter, Zen, um, you know, things like that. Um, you know, the benefits of using executions, um, using Zenith Thrash, uh, stuff like that. And then we also have like a free roaming mode uh, where you'll be taken into this arena and you just, you know, you'll, uh, there's like a hill up here and just like almost like an endurance game or whatever. Uh, but it'll just, it'll just only spawn like a single set of enemies and then they will uh, go away after uh, you complete them and then the hill will come back and then you can uh, fight them again. Uh, I do want it to, I do want like to have like either uh, more options on like kind of what type of enemies you can fight. Uh, that'll be further, um, that'll be something that will further develop with. Um, so anyway, um, that's kind of the training mode um, you know a lot of it was very much inspired by you know the original training mode for um, <clears throat> for the uh, the Kickstarter demo but it's much less uh, it's much it's much less you know walking you through the whole like games you know through every game mechanic one by one you just can kind of go through uh, you know whatever you want to kind of learn or practice on specifically um, you know, and and then as far as like the aesthetics of the uh, um, the training mode, uh, we didn't want it to look like the Kickstarter training mode where it just had you know kind of white box and grids and stuff like that. You know, uh, we wanted it to look a lot more presentable uh, than the Kickstarters. So, um. all right. Okay, so let me answer these questions. So, okay, I can answer the question about the uh, the keyboard and mouse melee buttons that aren't working uh, with the tooltip. Um, that was a user error on our end, and it was something that we couldn't hot fix because we were already so far in developing uh, this update that we couldn't just you know patch it in so uh, but we have fixed it and we have uh, addressed it um, but I know that's that's a big problem um, with <clears throat> with uh, people playing the game with the mouse and keyboard and getting very confused with the melee um, with the at least like what the tooltip tells them um, but if you like go in the help menu it uh, um, if you go into the uh, help menu, it actually shows the actual the the actual mapping. Um, so there's another thing I wanted to show about the. Um, so another thing that we've uh, fixed in Constellation, and this was just kind of from a bunch of uh, play testings that we've been doing internally. Uh, we realized that uh, some areas in this level is just just kind of unrealistic to reach at times and um, that's like the where the territories are way up on these towers and they're super hard to get to you'd have to go all the way this way jump up all the uh, through all these buildings as you're being you know as enemies are raining down on you just to get to that territory and to only have it like move by the time you get there so we've uh, so in this area we've actually added a, uh, a grav lift like like a little booster so it'll just take you up here and um, of course you could also uh, come back down here and maybe go this way instead so now now you're now you're at the top of a uh, constellation um, that's that's one thing I also wanted to mention about like uh, just one little thing that we added in this level and we might add it in other levels that will possibly need it so here's another really really popular request that we've been getting for months it's just I never really n knew how to practically implement it um, and that's uh, 
and that's uh, using other melee attacks besides your guns. Um, so, so now you're when you start using melee attacks, you start um, instead of uh, instead of just immediately like using your your weapons to whack with or whatever. Uh, we've added a uh, close quarters combat melee system, which is uh, punches and kicks. So uh, X you punch. And then um, Y is you kick, and you also uh, do some tail attacks as well. Uh, so that like that's something that um, a lot of. In fact, I could probably show you guys a little little uh, play blast that we. Uh... So this is something that we showed uh, to our. This is something we showed to our backers uh, before we showed anything else, and that was a uh, uh, a play by us test showing like some of the uh, CQC animations uh, where you do like uh, different punches and kicks um, and tail attacks and whatnot. Um, so. Again, like we just kind of use this, this as a starting point, and then we, um, and then uh, we actually added it into the game. Um, so you still have your normal, uh, or your your uh, your hands of Philion's uh, melee attacks, but um, so 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 to activate your uh, what do you call it? To activate your um, this attack right here. Uh, it's basically um, instead of just like spamming X, it's X pause and then start pressing X, um, and then same with Y, Y pause and then start hitting Y. Um, and then another thing you might notice uh, if you're looking really closely at Nilo's back when he does these attacks, you see like a light pop up, a green and purple. So these are kind of like little indications that okay, so like while I'm pressing Y, I push X when that green lights up. And then I push Y again to perform uh, the proton pool and proton, you know, blast or whatever. And um, and then uh, same with uh, same with that. Like when it glows red, it kind of indicates that. And then it, if it glows purple, it does that. Um, and then uh, also like when you. Um, we ha there's a little bit of a lunge to melees, like when you're close to a target, where uh, your character does kind of like a roll to the target. But we don't want uh, we don't want the lunge range to be too insane, because uh, the the close quarter melee is kind of more for like focusing on a specific target rather than uh, you know kind of uh, taking out large crops of enemies like using attacks like that, you know. Um, so, but on the plus side, is close quarter combat attacks don't uh, require, um, they don't take up any stamina. So you can just kind of, you can do them all, all day long if you want, but it will, it will drain your technique. Um, now, as far as, um, so another, another melee ability that we add, it's not too crazy new, but um, it's, it's basically another iteration of the Zenith Thrash. So Zenith Thrash, you just hold Y, and you do that uh, that upward thrash, uh, where you can actually kind of bring enemies up with you into the air, and you could like you know do do like aerial combos and stuff like that, and maybe pull them back down um, using like an attack like this, where it's X Y X or whatever. Um, but uh, a Zenith Thrash does suck up a lot of stamina. So. Um, but we have another like alternative that doesn't use as much stamina, but it does take a little bit more finesse to pull off, which is basically so when you do X Y to do this kind of sliding kick attack, 
if you hold down Y while you do it, uh, you'll do um, what's called a Zenith, or not, not, not a Zenith Thrash, a Gimbal Thrash. Um, which, what it does, uh, these enemies don't have enough health to last, uh, but uh, enemies with more health, instead of it pulling, um, instead of it pulling enemies directly upwards with you, it'll pull enemies a little bit forward, like that. And then you can kind of finish them off by uh, using the aim. Um, so it, it's it's a really fun um, it's a really fun mechanic to use. Uh, sometimes, like if you want to uh, kind of roll uh, roll your enemies into a crowd of other enemies, um, or you could just toss them like that. Um, again, there's a ton of options in this game as far as like how you want to do things. Um, So, okay, I think I am Okay, so um, I'm sure some of you people also, um, uh, some of the viewers here also noticed that uh, the dodge animation has been improved in both the air and on the ground. So your character now does kind of like a little spin. And um, not only that, but also the length of your iframes has been extended. So it's much much more clear it's much more clear clear to see like when you're you've got iframes and you know uh and it's also much more clear to see like when you're dodging um so uh let's see what else So um, the next thing um, let's see this is kind of a little fun thing I wanted to add for the uh, the behaviors of the railgun which Probably put a delay. Alright. I don't know why you're not picking up your weapons. That is correct. The Super Best Friend skins are only cosmetic. There we go. Okay, so another thing I wanted to kind of show is... Um, uh, so... One thing that was kind of, um, and I think this, uh, like I attempted to make this in the last stream, but we were having some issues, uh, which is the um, the idea of using the railgun for more than just sniping things, and uh, basically what it does now is railguns can um, uh, shoot projectiles out of the air, including your own. So if you like had a rocket, like I can fire a rocket, switch to a railgun fire it and then it's like uh it starts like I'll show you it zoomed out it kind of like starts spamming like a bunch array of rails along with a, a large explosion so it's got a it's got a really neat effect to it and enemies will you can also shoot their uh you can shoot their rockets out of the air too 
and it has like a blast radius. Um, so, uh, so if you have like a rocket launcher or the the bouncer gun, uh, which shoots those those bouncing grenades, the the green ones, um, you can uh, shoot it with a rail gun, and it'll it'll have you know a big radial effect. Um, all right, so. So, um, here's the other thing I want to show you guys. This will take, this will take a while to load, but it's, uh, it's definitely necessary to show. But yeah, absolutely. The the railgun shooting projectiles is very much a shock rifle inspired mechanic, no doubt. Uh, I mean, I guess we could add more impact sounds. Um, we've added more sounds, um, just kind of more like adjustments to a lot of the sounds. Um, uh, so there's no game sounds on this live stream. It's disabled. It's just music and me talking. Um, but yeah, as far as like having like landing sounds and stuff like that, uh, we we could add that, um, absolutely.
as well as taking a while to load. I think I think it hasn't been loaded on uh, Michelle's machine in a while, so. Okay, so like as far as the double trigger goes, uh, the closest thing that we have to it is uh, the Nova and Quasar buffs. Um, we could, uh, m we might be able to do more things towards that. Um, and there's also the Zen buffs as well. Uh, but as far as like uh, direct mechanics straight from other other games, uh, we're not really interested in. Um, we try to we try to make. I mean, like, for example, it does have a bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the Nova and Quasar Blast, it, it does have a bit of, um, Ninja Gaiden, as far as, like, you know, the Essence Technique and Alt Obliteration Technique and stuff like that, um, but the way it kind of handles, like, after you've released the charge, it's more like a, almost like a double trigger, trigger buff, um, so... As far as a double trigger like mechanic, uh, yeah, um, that there's that, and then there's uh, the Zen rewards, and we do want to add more Zen rewards. We do have uh, some ideas of what to do, like Zen level four, um, but we're not ready to implement it yet, so. Oh, this map is taking forever to load. That's all right. There's really nothing else I can really show that's not in the editor. Um, and even so, if I try to load it up in, in a build, it... All right, so... So it looks like we're at 79%. I think it's hang it's hanging on a static mesh load. It's a lot of those uh I believe it's those distance fields that it's trying to f build.
As far as new modes, uh, it's the new mode that we're adding is the training mode. Um, the uh, uh, as far as other modes after that, we definitely plan on doing more, uh, but I'm not ready to talk about them right now. Um, they're they're not they're not ready to be um, they're just not re they're not ready to be fully worked on or revealed. Um, after this release, we actually plan on uh, going full speed on working on Act 2 content. If you've uh, followed Michelle's streams, uh, she's working on some of the art assets uh, for Act 2. Um, so once once we uh, once we get more once we get like kind of the Act 2 stuff done, you know, maybe possibly we could have more uh, game modes along with it. Absolutely. Uh, Michelle's going to link her Twitch channel. So close. All right, uh, I'll I'll uh, share the link. Okay. Okay, so as, as far as multiplayer, currently there's split screen for endurance, and um, I can say that we are working on a uh, an online version of that. Uh, however, the online aspect still needs a lot of work. It's not ready, um, but we are working on it. Uh, as far as any other type of online modes, like uh, a PvP and stuff like that, um, we're definitely willing to experiment with things like that but uh you know it's it's not something we can guarantee to have anyway uh that's uh deadly frog's channel um if you're kind of interested on uh some of the art assets that she's making for um act two uh be sure to follow her on twitch uh she usually streams um Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, uh, usually around 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time.
Alright, so, sorry for being so quiet. Uh, just waiting for this map to load. It is taking a while. Um, I should have preloaded these before, but we were like, you know, it was really close to airtime. and But whatever. Sorry, guys. Uh, I already, I already did. Oh no, I haven't. You're right. Okay, so um. Mhm. Mm so you guys seen the um, that that fan art from Handsome. Um, this is the uh, the original sketch. The the pencil work. Uh, before going over in digital paint, uh, thought it'd be really kind of cool to show you guys that as well. It's really awesome. What's up? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So as far as co-op. As far, okay, so when it comes to um, the actual campaign, there's not going to be a co-op version of that campaign. However, if there's going to be like a co-op type mode, or like a campaign just for co-op, almost like a raid mode of some sort, uh, that's something that we have been talking about internally. Again, this is not, you know, something that we absolutely guarantee will happen with this game, but it's something that we, we want in this game so just because the way Nilo's single player game is designed the way the levels are designed the way the story is it just doesn't work with uh, a co-op type element but uh, we can design some type of a uh, you know dedicated campaign mode for co-op See, let's look at the progress on this. Oh my gosh. It's 84%. It's hanging on 84. It's probably the same things as last time. I believe this is the last like level I'm gonna load in this editor for today's stream. And then after this I'm just gonna show the rest of the stuff. Which isn't too much more. And uh uh that'll be pretty much everything. We'll t we'll kinda talk more about like, you know, other things that we plan on uh releasing in the game. And just kinda, you know, listen to some questions, uh but yeah, um, we'll uh, we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens from after this. Um, I'd like to thank everybody again for you know taking the time to watch this stream. Um, I apologize for some of the technical difficulties that we've had earlier, and also some of the uh, long loading times with these uh, some of these maps. Um, so anyway, again, thank you.
Oh my gosh. I actually uh I know I know what we should do for now because I'm gonna mute my mic real quick. <laughs> What's up? Uh I don't think I have uh, just a moment. Alright, so because this is taking forever to load, uh, we're going to do a different, uh, different way of presenting this. Um, I've, took, I've taken screenshots of this previously, so uh, Michelle is sending them over right now, so... Alright. So basically, um, was it uh, added a little bit more, um, more, more mood to Aurora again? So um, I remember when we first released this on early access, um, the the very like overcast color palette was you know a big turnoff for a lot of players. So um, we decided to kind of go more for it, like a uh, more like almost like a kind of a sun after the storm look uh, or like you know a little bit of sun peeking through the clouds and stuff like that um, but also knowing kind of um, in areas that weren't lit by sun it still kind of looked very samey um, so uh, so when you first play uh, the mission um, uh, we decided to kind of go more for this, you know, very yellowish color palette. Um, this is the where area where you start, you know, learn to crouch and stuff like that. Um, and then when you get to the uh, when you get to the actual city area, uh, it kind of looks more like this. Um, I mean, we put more like kind of bounce lights on this building to make sure it's, you know, more clearly illuminated and whatnot. Uh, but you notice like the atmosphere is a lot more fog foggier now, so we turned the fog back up a little bit, but not too much, because um, we still wanted things to look kind of mysterious and whatnot. Um, so 
now what we did was we kind of used uh, different color lightings for each side of this level. So we basically kind of relit. Um, so like when uh, so the area where you learn melee attacks, it's got kind of much more of a red, uh, you know, much hotter, and it, here it almost looks like a furnace, you know. So have these kind of like really hot lights kind of coming from underneath these pipes and stuff like that. Um, and then when you go into the uh, the area where you learn like aim and wall running, it's got like more of a yellow and blue color palette. Um, this area where you like first kind of have to get these like little sniper guys as you jump from platforms. Um, again, just kind of much more, uh, Just a much more overall greater variety of mood in these levels. And then uh, in the area where you learn Omni, it's like kind of more purples and greens, which is kind of like almost like poison or whatever, you know, like uh, that type of color palette. Um, there's another area. And um, but what's also really cool is like if you look up the clouds, the clouds are still kind of the same color throughout. Like it's, it's, it's almost like a different world up there, you know. Um, but yeah, that's what I was trying to load up for you guys, but it's, it is taken forever. So, um, it is a very large scene. I mean, these levels are, are enormous, so. Um. Um, yeah, I think, I think like a speed run or like kind of a time trial thing would be really cool too. Absolutely agree. Um, we do have a, a, a timer in the game, even though it's not showing, but we do have the system for it. Um, so we, we could, uh, we could bring that back and it looks like, okay, so it looks like this thing's finally done. Um, so anyway, I'll show you this level for real. So, also we've uh, turned up the atmospheric rain in this level, even though it doesn't show when you're not playing. Uh, but we've we've made like the floor much like wetter looking and stuff. Uh, we've got rid of some of the bouncing raid particles, and um, we just you know made the rain much more dense, much more noticeable, which looks really cool in lighting like this, where you know you got these really dense fogs and stuff like that with uh, these, you know, these really cool blues and then this, you know, awesome warm orange from the sun. But yeah, as you kind of can kind of walk around in this hub room, you can kind of see that the lobbies are also the same color palettes as the wings themselves. So you can have kind of an idea of where in um, this mission that you're, you're at. So and we didn't try to make it too crazy, crazy colorful. But, you know, at least you can kind of tell, you know, at least tell where you are and, uh, you know, not just see the same colors over and over throughout this whole level. So, um, ah, what else? Uh, so, something else I was going to mention about this, this map. Um. Uh, I probably mentioned before that like the um, like the tutorials being mapped to E and R, or not not showing up and stuff like that. Um, that has been fixed on all the tooltips. Um, that's something we should have fixed a while ago. I mean, we did, but we couldn't. You know, we couldn't just patch it up because we've we've been so far in this uh, update. Um, and as far as like having custom key bindings and stuff, that is something that uh, we absolutely need to do. Um, 
However, key bindings has been a little difficult for this game just because uh, we, we want to be able to like bind to multiple keys and stuff like that. Um, but it's so um, it is also something that we are working on and it'll be, you know, it won't be in this update, but, you know, we'll let you know when it's when it's up uh, for sure. Um, But yeah, this uh, this map has been kind of you know the 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 lighting and moods have been redone in this level um, to be more like there's this area, it's this area like in those screenshots. And it's actually currently playing the music, the ambient music at this level, which Kevin did a fantastic job with this music, so, you know, really, really goes well with these moods, you know. Definitely, like... Oh, I remember what I was going to mention. Uh, so, it was the... Um, I think originally, because the, the mission was supposed to be called uh, Aurora Sacrifice, and... Um, so like the original color palette was super gray and like we we meant it to be like kind of more of an, an ironic name uh where um now it's kind of the opposite of that so it's like you know more fitting uh where there's kind of more more colors throughout the level so but it is what it is so anyway um that's that's some of the new changes we've cha uh, we've done for the moods of this mission, um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about, or not not the last thing. Oh, no no no! Before I show that, there's another thing I wanted to uh, show is the um, so people who are like kind of really into or have somewhat. I know currently the story is not revealing too much. As far as a plot line and backstory and stuff like that, um, as we we do have like kind of a, a full story arc uh, for this campaign, and we've only kind of showed we only have like really the first third of the story. However, there is a bit of um, uh, we've added mission logs to this game. So when you're when you're on the planet planet Plimnaba playing as Nilo, you'll see um, this kind of blinking glow somewhere in in places. And that that's uh that's the corpse of an an attempted uh Aurora Dwarf uh survivor. Um and they obviously died and they left behind a mission log and uh they're 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 not voiced over, they're just written. Um but they do uh but they do follow um they do kinda follow a a story arc of um characters that were of the crew of the Aurora Dwarf. Um it's not just uh, a bunch of like kind of random characters talking. You're actually following very specific characters, and they just assigned a log to uh, this this soldier. So you can kind of follow uh, you you follow these uh, these characters, um, and you kind of you kind kind of read about like what they discovered themselves about this world. Uh, they also kind of talk about their point of views of encountering uh, the Night Scythe Hive that attacked their ship. Um, you know, like, you know, why, why did they attack the hive themselves, even though JMR told them to stop, like, a lot of that will get kind of explained, uh, in these, um, in these logs, um, and you can kind of, you know, see, you, you can kind of, you know, take in the story from a, a different perspective, um, so, uh, every mission has, um, I believe four or five mission logs, uh, Okay, so every mission has five mission logs. The only mission that doesn't have it is uh, is Solace. Um, the Plimnabon levels, uh, the mission logs come in the form of the, the uh, Fallen Soldiers. In uh, White Blazar, it comes in the form of computer consoles. Uh, and on the Moon, it comes in the form of these Night Scythe terminals. Um... So you can kind of, you know, 
get this get kind of more information about the lore and it's also like you know kind of something you can collect um but yeah people who are you know who want to kind of you know who are more interested in in the storyline and stuff like that it's it's definitely for you guys um so and all right so what else Okay, so this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys. Um, basically, the um, we've been kind of, you know, haven't really got around to this for for a while, but basically, uh, all the Night Scythe character models in the campaign so far, some of them, um, oh shoot, so, some of them are still. Uh, some of them still need animations, but we've made um, animations for at least all the night sites that you encounter in the campaign. So this is like this is one of the warrior, uh, which is just kind of more of a, you know the standard night scythe uh, attacker or whatever. This is like a charge attack or whatever. So like um, you, know, you can actually kind of see when they're charging at you. Uh, he kind of you know backs up, his claws open up, and then. Um, and then when he when he actually attacks, it's kind of more like a lunge like that. Um, so they actually kind of stop, and then uh, and then they'll they'll do a quick charge, and then they'll uh, kind of uh, ease out of their attack. So it it's instead of just kind of a straight up, they just charge at you with the with the slashing effects. It's kind of more it's going to be more like this now. Um, they also have um, they also have animations like for when they're blocking. Um, which is when they have the the orange force fields, they'll also have an animation that goes with it, uh, so that they'll like kind of be in these stances um, where you can't damage them because they're blocking your attacks. And then like uh, here's a a dodge for example. Um, the dodges are very fast, so the animation is very brief, but uh, but still you can. Um, and then this this one's this one's my favorite is when you grab enemies, they'll uh, they'll kind of like wiggle helplessly they'll flail helplessly you know which I think is kind of important if you're if you want to make your character feel powerful you make the character that you're about to destroy feel weak or look weak you know so you know kind of Darth Vader intimidation kind of kind of stuff you know so um, anyway uh, here's like so when you hit an enemy with a melee attack it does a large hit which will look kind of more like that much more exaggerated uh, where you see its its arms kind of just go out and then um, and then for a small hit like uh, from like bullet fire it'll do ju it'll just do something like that just a quick little a quick little jerk um, and then also uh, has has a new animation for uh, and all, all the enemies now have a st stunned animation um, so whenever you stun enemies using like purple melee attacks or when they uh, become in a, in a down but not out state they'll play this animation uh, which shows that they're um, you know disabled um, and another thing is they all have uh, they all have idle animations as well it's not like it's nothing too crazy but just you know something so at least they're they're breathing while they're you know standing still um, again, all these, all the enemies that are in the campaign, um, the warriors, the gunners, um, you know, they all, they all have animations, um, the riot guards, so, um, and then along with that, uh, especially like when you do the, uh, especially like when you do the close quarter melee, um, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to actually kind of see them animating as you hit them and we also added new impact effects for the melee attacks uh, as well so um, the melee attacks have new particle effects which are much like bigger and brighter and they also even uh, emit light um, which I'm going to show 
and just launch the build. Um, and then there's also um, there's also we, we've also added impact frames for some of the uh, the bigger attacks, such as the stun attacks and the the red melee attacks. Um, oh, thank you. Um, so I'll kind of show what some of that looks like in game. So I'll just do it in training mode. Um, and then uh, just like the uh, So uh, also like there's there's new particle effects for when you do zenith thrash. So you can kind of have some indication that you're s using some type of a force to throw enemies up in the air. Uh, so when you do the stun and a standard uh, zenith thrash, um, you have those particle effects. Um, so all right. Uh, So like, but yeah, I don't know if you can see it in the stream, but like, uh, when you're playing the game, at like you know at at a really good frame rate and stuff, you'll be able to see those like um those impact frames. You'll see that kind of slight pause as you uh. uh And then you know the sparks are much bigger and they light up and especially like when you um especially like when you use um some of the the like really like the room clearing melee attacks you know <laughs> it just turns into a crazy fireworks show um, which I'll 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 show some gameplay and I'll kind of show you you know like how the CQC is you know used in the combat and stuff like that. Um, just kind of show how some of these uh, new new things are worked into kind of the current game paradigm. So uh, we've made the hills much brighter too, much more readable in endurance. So you can cl clearly see them. Uh, yes. Oh no, that guy attacked me. got the bomb so like there is a bit of lunge in the melee attack but we really didn't want you to go like all Batman Arkham on on them where you're just flying around the room it just like uh, almost as if you don't have control over it like we do want that lunge we do want you to be able to kind of charge at your enemy when you do the close quarter melee um, but we still want it to feel like it's in your control um, Territory moved. What's up? Do some of the throw melee. Oh, there's no one in there. There we go.
think my territory moved. There was that stun bomb that I got for getting to Zen 2. Ooh, I got the swords. I love those swords. Yeah, the swords are great. Uh, you know swords can deflect rockets too, so... Lost the territory, I've been out of the territory for a while. Okay, so uh, inventory lock, that's actually been disabled right now, but we, we want to, uh, we do want to enable it, uh, at least for like kind of uh, advanced users, because I know like some people, like people who just start learning the game, they end up locking their in inventory by accident, I've noticed, and they don't know why they're not picking up uh, new weapons and stuff, so, um, so I just kind of disabled it for now, but I, I do want to bring it back. Uh, And maybe just have it like be an option or something you can have in the options menu uh, to be able to just uh, enable uh, inventory lock. Oh no, waves are getting crazy now. Oh no. <laughs> All right. This guy's up here.
Alright. So yeah, I guess I guess I'm gonna just wrap this up by just kinda showing some endurance gameplay and then um, you know we'll just kinda stop the stream from here. Again, thank you everyone for sticking around to see all this and There we go. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm cornered. There we go. Got out of that. Oh shoot. <laughs> yeah, like when uh when enemies do that kind of hit scan fire, it's really a good idea to kind of get out of the way. Definitely use walls. Oh no, I'm getting destroyed. Eleven seconds left. Lost my combo there. All right, but anyway, uh, that's um, that's what the uh, you know new update's gonna look like. Um, we're still gonna be fixing a few more things before we release, um, but it should be probably within uh, a week or two, hopefully. Uh, hopefully things don't go too horribly wrong, but um, that's just kind of um, that that's what that's what should be. Uh, that's what should be expected uh, by the next release. So, um, this is Kevin Bryant, aka Gnarly Teeth, Magic and Mirrors, and I hope everyone uh, to have a good day, good week, and just a good time. Uh, Omniscient one. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, that's a fantastic comment. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, um, we'll be, we'll be releasing this soon, so, uh, be sure to, you know, follow, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Twitter, follow our Facebook, um, just kind of, you know, uh, so you can kind of be up to date on all these uh updates join our discord group uh we're we're definitely on there all the time um we definitely like interacting with what's up and and uh definitely follow michelle's uh twitch stream um so um so anyway thank you everyone uh be signing off now